Welcome, everyone. Welcome. It's Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is the Sweet Dash Q&A webinar. Let's start off by having everyone jump into the chat and let me know that you can hear my voice. My name is Mike. I'll be your host today. Nice to meet you. All right, let's see. Chris, how are you, sir? Let's add the chat in so everybody can see. Hi, Ken. Hi, Lori. Let us know where, you, where you're where you joining us from. That's always interesting. Sometimes we have complete other side of the world. Sometimes it's just right down the road. All right, Seattle, Atlanta, Virginia, San Antonio, Brooklyn. How are you, Sean? Calgary. Yep. And Lisa from Nashville. Welcome, everyone. Good to see you. Um, okay. Hi, Chet. All right, so let me just kind of spend a few minutes going over what what you can expect here for the next hour or so, uh, and we'll get we'll get started. So the Sweet Dash Q and A webinar, typically a webinar, maybe you would expect to come in and see a complete walkthrough of a software. Uh, with something like Sweet Dash, it's just not possible. Uh, this the software is so large, it's so complex, or it's so flexible in the way that it can be made all the way from very simple to very complex. There's just no step one, step two, step three that works for everyone, which is an advantage in some ways, but also a disadvantage. When you're first starting, there's not a place that you can go and say, oh, well, this is exactly how I need to set this up. There are some guidelines, there are some um, best practices and some generalities, but uh, everyone's gonna have a little bit different flow. So what we offer here, or try to offer as often as possible when Certain people aren't on vacation in the summer, as was just the case, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we will try to offer as often as possible the ability for you to come in and ask your questions live. We will do our very best to address them. Of course, we can't go into complete details with every single person uh, for full setup, but the goal will be to uh, understand your question try to distill it down to the very key elements and get you an understanding that you can take away and move forward. So I think that's that's what we're here to do. With that said, you can go ahead and start dropping your questions into the chat. Noelle is here as well. Thank you, Noelle. She will be handling some of your questions via chat, uh, dropping links, that kind of thing. Um, so go ahead and start answering those questions or dropping the questions i will do my best to provide answers for everyone or at least elaborate on noel's answers if that's the case uh quick introduction what you're seeing here is of course the website if you don't have a free trial to sweet dash please do that there's no risk we don't take a credit card we don't hunt you down you are our attitude is please use it as much as possible make sure it's a good fit for you before you uh, commit to becoming a customer and investing in your, your business here. We want you to be happy, and that's, our, that's exactly our um, attitude there. Uh, during that process, the documentation is your best, best, best friend. If you have a question and you can put it into a few words, then typing in, um, what is a circle? Randomly chosen, sorry from Denise. Um, but I will I will go over a circle for you, Denise, uh, here in a little bit. But this is going to really help you. Also, Denise, uh, please check the first episode of the Simple Start series, which you can find here at Sweet Dash Academy. So the documentation is at help.sweetdash.com, Sweet Dash Academy at academy.sweetdash.com. And yes, Chet, I am recording. And also, uh, so there's a simple start series, which will do a very good job of trying to get you into these early concepts. Branding quick tips will, does a nice walkthrough of all the white labeling and the challenges around that. Some people have challenges that aren't familiar with DNS, etc. cetera. Uh, the tips and tricks and the feature spotlight series are just kind of an assortment. Some of them are very, very, very detailed. Uh, they are good options for you. A lot of light bulb moments can happen. Um, specifically, I will point out, uh, let's see, not this one, tips and tricks here. Uh, this form and lead gen funnel, this automate project creation seems to be, uh, these are two extended videos that do a walkthrough 
that is very, very detailed. Uh, and I think you would find these helpful, uh, a helpful investment of your time. Uh, in addition, the Sweet Dash community is a place where everyone can go and create an account. This is this will be a separate account from your Sweet Dash login. You'll just go to community.sweetdash.com, create an account. And on in our community, which is quite active, we have uh, groups containing uh, the, uh, separate niches that uh, that may or may not be useful for you, but there are they're pretty uh, a wide variety, and they cover a lot of the niches that we find are most popular and questions are asked here all the time and answered by uh as you see here by just other community members our team is also active here and then every the best part is every every week or two or three uh, it usually at least on that period we will release what we call a uh, fresh on live which is this is the very first place that you'll see uh the latest updates announced and described and linked to the documentation. So we have quite a few of our community members who will admitted admitted by them sitting in a chair, clicking refresh, waiting for fresh online. So you know, I, I guess it's um, they're excited about it. So there we go. Website, documentation, academy, community. All right, let's go ahead and get started then. Um. Let's go back to the early questions, and I'll go ahead and try to cover as many as possible. Guys, please, please keep dropping your questions, and I'll do my best to keep up. All right, Ms. Shirley, update on the LMS. As Noel says, it's slated for release in Q3, and that is going to be a reality. Uh, we're about two weeks away from a testing phase, and... But yes, the LMS is coming along nicely, being built out and completed for the first iteration. There will be several iterations, so uh, probably should not expect to find the to go look at the best LMS on the on the planet and assume that our first iteration will be all those things. Um, it will be the, the it will be quite substantial and, in my opinion, quite elegant. Um, but there will be parts and things that need to wait for later iterations just for the simple um, utilitarian purpose of getting things out, right? Getting them out, listening for feedback. This is always our approach. I know many of you heard me say this before. The first iteration is getting the basic formation of the feature out. Then we listen. We listen to you. We listen to your feedback. We collect that feedback. We distill that feedback. And we use that to create the second iteration. And this is how we always uh, are quite confident that what we're building and the time that we're spending is well spent building exactly what you're asking for. This webinar ends up being quite a few and quite many examples. The place where some of those features are discussed, they're refined. Uh, I get feedback from you and we decide exactly how that's going to go. So uh, quite helpful to us in that sense. All right, Denise, circles. Circles are a way of typing or uh, it's a group permission mechanism is the best way to say it. So let's just see what this says. So it's a way to bulk assign resources, yes. Uh, you can essentially customize the experience of your clients based on their circle affiliation, Denise, okay? So if in the example of a an accountant say bookkeeping you just have a simple uh, tax prep annual tax prep you'll have payroll you'll have these different types of clients so you would maybe put them in different circles and based on their circle affiliation you can direct them to a, a unique start page you can add, give them access to individual shared folders you can send messages directly to everyone in a circle you can uh, in portal pages, you can show or hide parts of a portal page based on if they're in a circle or not in a circle. There's really the whole, this, the circle is the, um, the most powerful conceptual mechanism in Sweet Dash. Okay, so we build almost everything with circles and teams in mind. Team is the circle equivalent on the staff member side. So this gives you a way to build not only just one 
one client portal. This is my client portal. It looks like this. It always looks like this. Everyone that sees it, right? That's very simple. Anybody could pull that off, right? But circles gives us any number of ways to customize that client portal based on who is logging in. Uh, let's go to the to the uh, community, and I wanted to um, mention this guy, David Dijewski, who is very active in our um, in our community. But there was a, someone, I believe it was Ken. Ken, Ken, I think Ken is here, and Ken, there was an email that I saw come in that I, that I wanted to make sure that you uh, that you are aware of this. All right, so David built a very. Mm, I'm not finding it right now, but I will do my best to get you the link directly to this. But you see all these these posts. David built a very very complex workflow uh, using, and also it's on YouTube. Um, yes, yes, yes. Let's do this. YouTube.com quickly. Sweet dash. Okay, so if you go to our YouTube channel, Ken, and go to videos here, and find the webinar with David Dijewski, and it's in here somewhere, um, go ahead and watch that and just get an idea of what he built. Here it is right here. Uh, but it's a very complex structure where he does use companies as a family. And I believe that was one of your, that was the gist of your question. So that's, that'll really help you as far as understanding some com some concepts there and then reading and looking at the associated um, somewhere here. There's a um, flow chart that David made as well. I think it can help you. Uh, but Denise, I think that try I'm trying to explain circles there to you. That's basically what it is. You, you need to follow up with the documentation and the Simple Start series episode one where circles is covered okay all right so denise yes shirley yes chet yes ken there's ken all right ken says first question <laughs> there we go set up each family and company first mode or not there you go ken uh, i it's like minority report around here yeah i'm figuring these things out but yes i'm I intended to come with come to you ken with that answer uh, that's the best I can tell you on a conceptual mode. Yes, people have are using families, uh, setting the company as a family, right? And then each new contact client that you add, you will associate with that quote unquote company slash family. You can even use Ken. You'll see that if you listen to the, I'm going to do it here. If you listen to the webinar, you'll see that David even went in and and translated the word company to the word family, I believe. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how he did it. I know that's how he did it. I'm not sure that it was actually family, what he said, but uh, while we're on this subject, and I want to show you this, is what I'll show this to you, Ken, but we just released, everyone, the ability to load language sets provided by our official translators. So you'll see here I have Spanish loaded, right? And so all of my translations are switched to Spanish. But let's go ahead and just reset to default in this account, and I'll come back to English, which is the default. And then, Ken, what, what you can do is just look here, use this uh, filter to target. You're going to look for a word or phrase to target for translation. And you don't always have to use a different language. You can use... Um, a different word. So here for company or additional company or any of these places that you see uh, a word is used that you want, want to use differently, you can change these all to just this part, right? You can say families right? or, or just say it however you want to say it in your use case. And that will replace the string that you see here. Now some of these are dynamic. These are the roles. You'll, you need to read about that here before you begin. Uh, but you you can even rename things. I know we have a lot of people that we can rename work requests, which is our word for uh, work for ex the way we can accept um, project requests, essentially task requests from the client side. 
we have a lot of companies and a lot of customers that rename this to uh, work order or some other uh, nomenclature using translation. But with that said, if you just want to translate to Spanish and you don't want to do it all yourselves, you can just load right here and you can load the translation straight away in just a matter of seconds. Uh, all the platform will be translated to Spanish. So that's kind of a newer uh, release that we just made. Okay, I'll keep going. Tracy, I'm having trouble integrating phases in project management. Could you walk through the vision behind phases? Some features like actions are only able to be tied to phases, but it seems to not add additional management benefits from just using tasks. Yeah, Tracy, it's possible one day we will filter down the actions widget, the actions, tr trigger actions, automations to the task level. But in general, uh, phases are the are what we would, some people would call them milestones is another uh, word used in the project management space. We decided to go with phases because it's just more of a, a, a normal person word than milestones or um you know, well, any other kind of agile type nomenclature. So essentially a phase, Tracy, would be a group of tasks that are the first phase of a project. So in the case that you were um, <clears throat> building a website, for example, uh, phase one might be, phase one will be get the information for the domain name, make sure that we have that control of that, set up the hosting, Install the uh, WordPress instance in case, you're, in case you're working like that. This is all phase one. This is maybe uh, handled by your uh, DevOps team. They're going to handle all that. When phase one is complete, you can trigger a set of actions that will uh, do things like update the progress of the project, for example. I think I have something like that. Illustrated. Oh. Uh. Let's see. Well, here's a project. Uh, this is what we call a project dashboard viewed from the client side. So for, and updates are made here. So you can set up a phase when it's completed to update the project percentage so that it, that will automatically happen. It can also update the project status that you have here. Uh, so as of now, the phases are the lowest level that we have trigger action automation in the project space. Does that make sense, Tracy? I wanna finish that thought with you if if you're um, gonna have an answer for me, let's see. Okay, all right, I hope that helps. We do see some demand and some uh, steady requests to have the trigger action on the task level. And that's something that we agree with. I think that's a, that's a good way to go. It almost feels like it would be just a lot to deal with. Um, what we what we find is that that in a project management um, world, that's a that might not be useful in in that sense. What I think probably you're using it for is the um, the stepping of a client through a project, and we have an upcoming feature that is called Journeys that I think will be much more useful. Journeys will be a essentially a step-by-step -step client journey. And actually we do use the word milestones for each one of the tasks. And each task can be a very small thing or it can be a very big thing. It could be finishing a module in the LMS or it could be something even larger. So uh, journeys, each one of the milestones will have trigger actions associated with it a complete UI from the um, client side so they can see exactly where they are in the in the journey. And uh, additionally, it'll have uh, progress meter, progress uh, bar, all that really designed to facilitate any kind of onboarding or journey that you have with your customers or clients. And I think that will probably be something that you would take advantage of if it came when it's ready. Okay, Sean. Sean says, I have four WordPress websites that are all subdomains of one main company. Okay. Is there a way for me to seamlessly integrate Sweet Dash so that customers can log in one time 
and have access to everything instead of them having to log in each website separately. No, Sean. So we don't we don't do any kind of integration with website login. Uh, I'm assuming you, you, you said WordPress. Yeah. So we don't do any any integration with the WordPress user model or the WordPress database. Um, the best I can say is that you would create your Sweet Dash custom URL as another subdomain of your um, primary domain and link those all those five entities together so that the client portal will be the sweet dash subdomain and you can link to that from all four of those other websites i don't know if that works in your use case but yeah and and they won't share logins and they won't pass off authorization tokens or any anything like that so you know we're we really built to not to be tied to WordPress, but to be helpful with WordPress, but also with every other type of uh, website builder. I think WordPress is a is is of course the king, or it was the king, but in the future, I think you'll see that um, it'll be less so. Web SaaS based web builders will become more and more popular uh, and integrated as well. Hope that helps. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Can, there's an answer for Ken. Have you tested a plas platform with screen readers like JAWS? Occasionally, Chet. Um, you know, we're not really focused on that at the moment. So, yeah, that's. I, I understand the tech, the context of your question, uh, but yes, that's something we are moving towards, but not in a aggressive fashion. All right, Shirley's talking about the LMS. Yes, yes, it, it will be cool, Shirley. I mean, there's there's a lot we want to do with it, for sure. Um, so to extend on that, we're building the LMS not so much in the sense that it would be something that a university would use or a um, very strictly education track type organization would use more so building it as a way to, to for you to create a product that you can make money with right so it's designed to um, create a pack packaged up LMS product that can become a a product with a price with um, all sorts of ways to automate onboarding to that product or uh, providing access to the product so it's 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 less. I saw I've seen some questions recently that, that made me want to clarify that it will be more geared towards you, towards you as a business and you profiting from the course as a product. Yes, and in addition, it will it's being designed to be also used by staff, right? So not just on the client side, but you'd be able to assign an LMS course to a staff member on an in. During an onboarding, uh, so that say you have a training course for your company, you can create a training course, and as a new um, intern or whoever's starting with you, that can be part of their automated onboarding. Okay, here, sign this contract. Here, complete this form. Give us all this information, and then next step, now you're assigned this uh, onboarding course. And as in each course during the LMS, each module can have its own trigger action. Uh, point where you can kick off the next automation, the next automation. So uh, I think many companies will find it just as useful for the HR side as they will for the client side. Okay. All right, Ken, what's this company first? Ken, yes, you absolutely can, Ken. If whether you're in client in company first mode or individual mode, you can still if. Company first mode will one day probably be the default mode that we start with. We'll just start everyone in company first mode. And the reason is because in company first, you can work with an individual. You can assign a project to an individual. You can still do everything with an individual uh, client. Let's say you you meet, a, you meet someone that has a very small business. They're just starting out. They don't even really have a company name or they're um, established as a, a self self-employed. So you can just use their their name, and you can still op operate just like that, um, even in company first mode. So you can work with both. So it's very flexible like that. 
I I think uh, can without knowing without really spending the time to think it through completely. I really think you're probably better off in company first mode, because then when you assign things, you'll be assigning it to the family, and everyone in the family would have access. Um, we create we auto create what we call company circles. So when you create a <laughs> no else no else telling me scroll down man I've already answered all that I answered all that okay good all right see good job Noel let's switch all right yes good job all right Noel says she's answered it I would say company first I would say take advantage of the company circles um all those okay <laughs> do I have the capability and says can I answer this one, Noel? Do I have the capability to change what project managers have access to within SD? For example, I would like to have PM have access to client pages. Uh, you mean portal pages that are assigned to a client? Well, you can do that, Ken, because you can, well, it won't be through the mechanism of, oh, well, this client has a project manager named uh, Ken and now by definition Ken will have access to that portal page uh, but that's not the right mechanism that can accomplish that but you can accomplish it by assigning the the directly the project managers you have in mind because a portal page you can assign both internals and externals to have access but you should uh, it's hard for me to know exactly what you're trying to accomplish with this because it's not quite clear but I think I I'll try to answer that in generality as I did, but uh, can one calendar be used for an entire team? <clears throat> Denise, you mean that everybody, I think the answer is no. Yeah. So right now our calendars are tied to each person. When you're logged in, you're going to see the events that are associated with you. Um, we don't have group events at the moment. So that's something that we do think, do plan to add, uh, you know, in the future, but right now, the as good as far as it goes is when an appointment is scheduled there are two people who will have that appointment on their calendar also when you add an event manually from the uh UI you you have the choice of uh adding also or allowing also the target of that event so let's just say events are meant to be sort of follow ups for the sales cycle. So if I say, okay, here, I need to follow up with Ron, um, and this is gonna be me, I can choose to show this event on his calendar as well. So in this case, uh, Ron Howard, well, there's two, both Rons. Ron Howard will be the internal, the, the staff member. Ron Swanson will be the contact, the external. And in this configuration, uh, it'll show on both of their calendars. Uh, Denise asked about importing. Noel's answer is correct. Uh, we don't have a way of guaranteeing that wherever you bring an, a CSV from, that uh, it will map one for one with the way that we that we could have our data points structured. So yeah. Okay, good tracing. And and just curious, I'm going to try to keep up here. You you are using your tasks as a step-by-step -step for your clients, your prospects, so that they can see them and check them off. And then that's what you're looking for to have the triggers there. Let's take a look. Is that right? All right, let's see. Kind of, let's wait for me to show them. Okay, yep, well, it's perfect. Journeys will be the absolute best way. I and mean, this is gonna be, Journeys, I just don't know how to say it. The, the best way to say it is Journeys is kind of the cherry on top. <laughs> it's what we've been working towards for a very long time to build all of these mechanisms. Uh, all of the ingredients, we have, now have all the Legos, and now we're in Journeys is one of the, imagine a, you know, a 300,000 foot, view of all the things that you might build and be able to organize them in a, in a in a a very 
uh, zoomed out kind of journey, not really something like a flow, for example, you might be familiar with is a, is kind of a macro real zoom uh, or zoomed in kind of mini journey. But the journeys that we'll be building, a step of one of the steps, one of the milestones might be completing a project, like something as big as completing a project. So, you know, that's a big step. Or one of the journey, the milestones might be the completion of an LMS course, right? Or it might be as simple as um, a con signing a contract, or uh, it might be as simple as a self, what we call a self assertion or self completion. They there is no actual check for that step. It just says to them, you know, go outside and water your plants. Okay. And then all they do is come back and they say, I did that. Complete. They click complete. That's it. They they self-certified that that step is complete. Um, and that can be, uh, that's, can, that's one of the options. So it can be very flexible, meaning that it has to, we have to see it programmatically, the completion of an LMS course or a contract. We have to see that programmatically or they can self-certify, or another option is that you can manually certify. In your case, Tracy, you would be, you could, you know, they could send you a picture of having watered the plants, and you can approve that and say, yes, I can I can set, certify that you've watered your plants. I'm going to check this as from the admin side because that's what I, how I configured it, and now it's complete. So there, there'll be a lot of options for you, and each each milestone of the journey can have its own set of options. Or I'm sorry, its own option. Yes, its own unique options. Not just that one, but many others. Yeah. Okay, Hilton. Uh, let's let's answer this. So. Oh, good, Shirley. Good. Shirley said, "Wow, Journey sounds awesome. I love this platform. Thank you, Shirley. That's nice. We are very much Journeys. Uh, don't get me started. I could talk about that for really <laughs> the rest of the time." I'm excited about it too. An email address is not required when adding a lead. An account will not be created. Converting, yes. Okay. I think that's an answer. I'm not sure where the question is. Okay. What is the best way to convert lead to prospect? Well, Hilton, you can just go to, let me see if I can get to a quick example. You just go to the contact and you can just convert them directly. I think probably Noel covered that one. So, but let's see if I can find a lead here. Usually leads don't last long. They get converted pretty quickly. Here's one. Lead. Convert to prospect or convert to client. You get to choose. Okay. How do I trigger billing? Hmm. Oh, okay. Thank you, Noel. Uh, here. Okay, yeah, you can see now. Convert to prospect, convert to client. Yeah. Okay. Ken says, how do I trigger billing? Well, it's that's somewhat of a complex question, Ken, but there is definitely a way to trigger billing. You can, there's many ways, actually. You can run a timer, and when they can complete try a timer, you can add that to an invoice. You can set up recurring profiles, which will auto-generate an actual invoice based on your timing, which can be automatically sent. You can set up accumulating profiles, which is the like the example is uh, all your. It's a accumulating profile. Think of it as a an invoice factory where it just sits there and it's waiting to to spit out an invoice based on your configuration. So if, if you're working during a month, your client says, "Look, every month, just send me an invoice for what you did that month." You add all your work, your items, or your timers, or whatever you add. To you add those to the profile as you go along through the month. Then on the um, the day that configuration says the profile will generate from take all those items and generate an invoice, which then shows up in your invoice list. Then it will reset and er erase all those items and start over with as a blank slate for the next month. So what's great about that is your employees or your or you or whoever's doing the work, just you just do the work. You add it to the pro accumulating profile and you forget about it. And then you don't, nobody has to remember to go and create these invoices because they get automatically created and they can be sent automatically or they can be set to generate as draft, which will then let someone approve them before they're sent. So um, there's, 
and that's just the beginning. There's ways that you can uh, automatically set proposals to generate into an invoice. You can set um, invoice pro. You can create invoice profiles, which will basically be a pre-invoice and just convert to an invoice when you tell it which client to 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 um, be generated for. So there's a lot of different ways, and I think you'll find those as you dig in, Ken. Yep. Custom URL. Yep. Shirley says the custom URL works perfectly for me. Me too, Shirley. Okay. Yes. Um, so there's some discussion here about CSV. Let me let me give my Uncle Mike wisdom here. When you are about to when you are preparing to import contacts, start with one one row, right? Make your CSV have one row. Import that and then check it and if that's okay and you're really happy then get get really crazy and go to four rows then import four rows and if that's okay delete those and then work your way up what you should not do definitely don't do is get a 500 record 5000 record csv and just cowboy go go with that thing right up right away because you're going to you can make it quite a mess. Yeah. So in general, and this applies to anybody, everybody, no matter your experience level, take your CSVs and wade in to the shallow end to start with and see what the results are. Um, it'll save you a lot of headaches. Okay. All right. So Shirley is a course creator. So the route you, that we're going with, you mean with the business, uh, business focus, Shirley. So that's great. Yeah. With the... <clears throat> With the education-based track type things, it's it's a lot more. Um, oh, there's so many so many little variables and build outs that, of course, the bureaucracy needs to see. Right, some bureaucracy needs to see somewhere, and that you know, look, there's there's flavors of LMS for that. Go then, but they don't really fit in with what we're building, which is a a business tool. So yes, of course, we're going to build around. Hey, let's take this LMS. Let's make a course. Let's sell it and get you a subscription. Let's make you make you into a SaaS owner. And you can take Sweet Dash and build your own little SaaS, your own little uh, membership site that just feeds out uh, courses and, and content and shared folders and all these things that you have and create your own little world and your own little business out of Sweet Dash. Uh, it's almost like software that you can use to build your own software in a lot of cases. And if you ever spend time looking through through the community at some of these more complex build outs, you'll really understand what I mean. Yeah. Uh, so Sean says, "Hello, Noel. Can Sweet Dash, Can I replace my Learn Dash with Sweet Dash LMS?" Sean, yes, I think so. Um, now the caveat that I that I mentioned earlier is going to still apply here. Learn Dash is an LMS that's been around for a very long time, which means they've had time to to cover the basics, go a level or two or three or five above the basics. So um, there's going to still be things in the Learn Dash that are you know a little bit an evolved feature that that can only come after the after the first two or three iterations. So if, if you're using those really evolved features, then maybe not. But definitely for the basics, our LMS is going to do a great job. It's going to um, be really geared towards exactly what, how, what I just described. And uh, I think you'll, you'll find that it's quite usable. will be quite usable, yeah. All right, Ken, the best I can say, Ken says, I'm attempting to allocate a PM as a coach for the child within a project, and I would like to, the PM to have access to all relevant child into info. Ken, I highly recommend joining the community. I highly recommend looking up, looking up David Dijewski's posts and flow charts, and also I highly recommend watching the YouTube video where David and I discuss his actual build-out. It's really similar to what you're trying to accomplish. So 100%. That's that's a good route for you. Okay, uh, Lisa says, is there a way to to all sales so that all salesperson role to view proposals? Mm. 
Lisa, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Um, so salesperson is a staff member side role. Uh, but I think the answer is no, but because proposals are essentially, you mean it's create proposals. Yeah. I can see where that could make sense. Um, what I'm going to do, Lisa, is take a note here. And I take notes during these webinars by screenshotting your your question, and then I'll go back through them. So. I've just done that. I think there that could be a place where we could allow a setting, bring in a setting that would allow you to specify that salespersons could view proposals, because I think that makes sense, right? Who builds proposals? Sometimes it's the salespeople, or they want to take one and copy it and modify it or, or something like that. Lisa, is that, is that how you plan to use it? Uh, Hilton says, great tip on the CSV. <laughs> yeah. That's anybody who's done a lot of CSV importing will, will give you the same advice. So it's, it's the kind of advice that you get from hard experience. Yes, Lisa, that's exactly what she wants to do. So mm -hmm. the, the only reason I'm thinking it through Lisa is that salesperson is our role that we have developed to have okay thank you marge yeah that really helps me thank you that we've developed to have to allow selective visibility based on uh claiming was is the words we use so as a salesperson when you have let's say you have a uh, group of 100 prospects or clients they're all unclaimed right so salespeople want to grab one and they want to be very um, territorial about that one, right? They don't want to do all the work and then have another salesperson grab the commish, right? So uh, we have a mechanism for salespersons to claim or you know take essentially off the table. This is my client. I'm going to take them. I'm going to work them. And another salesperson to take another client. So um, yes, we can create a visibility setting, but we'll also have to be really careful to understand how that could affect that type of visibility um, protection, but it's certainly not undoable, just giving me, just causing me to think a little bit on the fly here about before I give a really simple answer. It's not a simple answer, but it's certainly doable. And we will review that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Let's go up a little bit. Change. Okay, I answered that one. I answered that question about Ken from Ken about the project managers. Okay, great. All right, Sean says that's awesome. Thank you. Kind of his way. Yes, we have talked about that. Will there be calendar sharing for departments within the company? Calendar sharing. Uh, Ryan, it won't be. So Ryan, the answer is sort of yes, and, and let me explain. It won't be the sharing of an entire calendar, but there will be sharing of events. So if, for example, there were five events that were shared with a, a particular team, which we call, that's our grouping mechanism for internals, like staff. So then those five events will show on all the, peop all the calendars of people that are in that team, which I believe is what you're saying, yeah. Similar, similar way to say it, I think, is grouping of events. I know in Google Calendar, they call that a calendar, where everyone shares a calendar. So I'm, I'm sure that's where the nomenclature comes from. Okay, let's move. March has the same question. Is future plans for an organization-wide internal calendar? Uh, yes, March. Yes. That would be work on the same concept that we would have uh, multiple events grouped and then shared with particular users or particular teams uh, on the internal side. But interesting, what's, what's interesting I'm thinking now is that these, the grouping of the, of the events will need a, a, a structure. So meaning we could add 
as we go to add events like we we've done here add let's see event what we have what we have now is category but we i think we would need another mechanism here to and it could be even calendar that's the nomenclature that uh, google calendar uses although i find that quite com i don't find it confusing but many people that i try to explain that to find it confusing and i end up explaining it like each calendar is like a layer on uh, that you lay lay on top of the main calendar and as you take the other calendars you're layering on and they're kind of like a layers of an onion and that way you can see all the events and if you take a layer off that, that's then you don't see those events so essentially the same structure would be how we would work march okay Again, I'm going to come back to that. Let me just make sure. Is there a Mac or Android-based desktop version in Product Roadmap? Ryan says, is there a Mac or Android-based desktop? I think you mean, I know what you mean. Ryan, what you're looking for, what you're talking about is, is a... an installable uh, application typically made uh, with... A particular flavor of JavaScript that uh, it can be Mac and PC based. We do actually have in development a one of those type applications, um, but it will not be what you're looking at there, uh, desktop version. But you can install Ryan. Uh, the The platform is a PWA, a progressive web app, so you can install it on your desktop as a PWA both on Mac and on Windows and I think on Linux as well yeah so depending on your browser you want to use want to look at Chrome Chrome of course will do it um, you might see that Let's see if I can I can't illustrate it right now but yes but this installable app will be a file sync application similar to Dropbox. And that's all I'll say for now. But yes, we're aware of this technology and working there. Yep. All right, Ken says, can I trigger billing once an academic coaching session has been completed? Okay, Ken, my first probably. But the question would be, what would be what would be the completion? requirement right so is that completion based on the completion of a project phase or a project it would need to fit into something that we uh, have a trigger for so we have triggers for an invoice being paid or an estimate being approved or a project being completed a phase being completed um, or we have manual triggers you could set up a manual project or a actions template and trigger that manually after the coaching session has been completed but the answer is yes is if it's a if it's a automationable that's a word noel that's a word don't even say it's not automationable event <laughs> automatable what is it noel help me um you know what i'm saying event then yes you can do it or if it's not it'll be really close to it and you can create the automation and then manually trigger it so i think the answer is yes and if it's not yes yet it's certainly we we are working all the time to try to close those any gaps that we can find or our customers are finding between the usability that they want they expect or want and what we're able to provide now Uh, looks like Hilton has a good question. Let me see. Uh, Hilton says, I think when you manually change a lead to prospect that they do not get the circles automatically assigned to them. Like prospects do not come in. Like prospects do coming in on an intake form. Yeah, so Hilton, you mean uh, this the circles for all prospects and all clients. I think, yeah, we need to check that. Um, okay, good. Thank you, Hilton. I'm going to screenshot that as well. Okay. 
Yes, and there's the link to the community. And when once it, you can click there. Okay. All right, Ken. Ken says, thanks for all the advice. I will check out YouTube and probably join a future webinar with more questions. Come back anytime, Ken. This is, I meant to say that at the beginning. I usually do. This is not a one-time opportunity. We have, we have people that come every, every week or every other week or whenever it's convenient. It's, it's all fine. We're happy to see you. Is there any way to export a specific build out and then import it to another Sweet Dash account? Sort of, surely. We have the template library. So in it's not a complete build out because of course you won't have the same clients or the same, you know, all those things, but you can, in many cases, like a proposal or a project or a portal page. Uh, and in the future journey templates is one of the things that we'll build. So imagine taking the journey concept that I described before, and then say you build out a really nice journey, then you'll be able to save that journey as a template. And then we will programmatically go through that journey and follow all the threads, meaning, okay, well, they, they applied an email, uh, add to email marketing list. We're going to create that email marketing list, and we're going to create uh, the, all the autoresponders that are associated with that list. We're going to follow it all the way down to its last uh, node and take all those elements and c create them. And then when we extract that template into another account, we will create all those elements in the new account and make all the connections between those all in a blink of an eye. And so the goal will be that when you load a journey template that's been created, all the content, all the connections, all the circles, all the email templates, all the things that were built out by that creator will be available to you immediately. All, to, all already connected and in some of course you'll have to review it and make some changes that that will bring it a little closer to what you expect for your business but the goal would be maybe if it's a funnel an automation funnel then all you need to do is take the intake form and put it on your website and then uh, when someone completes that intake form it kicks off that automation that funnel and you're off and running uh, so that can go that can be very, very spe specific to certain niches and require very few changes. Or in some cases, if you just want to take a starting point and adapt it, once you, after you load a template into your account, it's 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 not associated, it's not connected to the parent template anymore. Then it's all yours, and you can modify it as you would as you need to. And in fact, you can modify it um, maybe 20, 30 different ways to fit your use case, and then you could upload it back to the template library as, hey, this is my improved version of that one uh, that, that somebody else contributed. So in this way, we'll be able to um, provide lots of options for you to get a really quick start and quick customer and client journeys built out and executed. So surely that's, that's the, best, the best answer I can give you now. Yep. Uh, and also, Noel gave a good answer I didn't touch on, which is exactly <laughs> uh, the reseller profiles. Uh, so if you are a reseller, uh, you get a reseller dashboard. You also get access to an entire set of tools that will allow you, with, with each new child that you create, you will be able to copy particular elements from your parent account into that child account. And those things include contract templates, email marketing templates. Um, so if you were, for example, in a very specific niche like um, virtual assistant, say, for example, uh, you might build out an entire set of um, an entire set of email marketing templates, contracts, things that are very specific to your niche. And then as you're going around and you're and you're talking to potential clients or, or, or uh, child accounts, you're reselling the platform to them. You're saying, hey, uh, you're a virtual assistant. I'm a virtual assistant. I know what you need. What I've done is I've created this very unique platform. Um, I'm going to white label it for you. It's going to be full of these pre-built templates that are exactly speci specific to your niche. Everything is, is you know set up for you, essentially. And for that, I'm going to charge you XYZ a month. 
which will be more than, of course, you're paying us for the reseller, the wholesale fee. And that difference is your residual uh, recurring income. Uh, so that work that you put into creating those those uh, reseller profiles and all the content there is a huge part of the value that you bring to your uh, reseller child accounts. So that's another way that you can take what you've built and copy it into another account. And, and that's a mechanism, like as I said before, to help you make money if that's if that's the way that you want to use it. That's not for everyone, but it's it's well designed for those who are uh, in the right uh, space. Um, even web designers, even like a, a digital agency can use a, a mechanism like that to resell to their clients. Uh, well, I'm going to say, you know, we're, we're, we can do a website for you, but we can also provide you with a very, very built out client portal, email marketing, all the things, co contract templates, all the things that are part of reseller profiles and get them off to a great start, white labeled, everything's done and delivered. And that can be part of the uh, your revenue stream. All right, Shamika, how are you? I thought I saw a question up earlier, but I think Noel handled it. But let's go ahead and see Shamika's question. I need my forms to feed into my external email service. I can't do Zapier and SD doesn't use Pably or Integrately. Will webhooks be available anytime soon? Uh, I'm going to say no, Shamika, because I don't want you to plan on it. Um, no. So you want to feed into the external email service, which is, you know, what what we'd rather do is spend the time solving the issue why you can't why you wouldn't be able to use Sweet Dash's uh, email service. So uh, that's what that's where we'd rather spend our time concentrating. Um, webhooks, API, those kind of things will come, but it's not the immediate short term or immediate term. So. That's the best answer I can give you, Shamika. I, I, I wish I could love to make you happy and imagine you smiling on the other side, but um, that's the honest answer. Okay. Shirley says, wow, the reseller account is very interesting. Sounds like what I'm looking for. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, we have, we have some resellers that are just killing it. I mean, really, almost surprising us. Every day or two or three, some we have some that are a new account, a new account, a new account. I mean, they're out there doing a great job. So we're happy to support resellers. And uh, what's unique, it's what's unique about this platform is, I believe it's 100% unique. Uh, of course, I can't know every every case, but I, I don't know of another platform that lets you take the platform, completely white label it, and built built to sell to another person. Uh, with such a low entry, with such a low, um, you know, barrier to entry, I guess is the right word. Yes, and it's built, designed for that, and the extreme white label label capability is the reason that's possible. Yeah. Carolyn says, do you offer dedicated IP del addresses for email delivery to allow for building up IP reputation and improve inbox delivery? Well, Carolyn, yes, we do. Um, so. That's something that you that you read, but I I can give you another article that talks about having a dedicated IP is, um, sort of a marketing concept. So yes, there's such a thing as warming up IPs and all those other things. Uh, here's what you, here's what you're looking for: the deliverability add-on, and you'll find that in Manage Account and Add-ons. So yes, we do offer that. I'm not sure how long this is all in flux and, and just like email marketing in general in that space and the best practices, everything's changes all the time. I've read articles recently that talked about how dedicated IP is a little bit of a um, overblown concept. And so we'll see. We'll see. But for now, we've been offering this for years. And so this is not new for us. Uh, it was quite a has always been looked at as a desirable way to improve inbox delivery, as you say. Um, with this deliverability add-on, we're sending through SendGrid. It's possible that that would change in the future. 
uh, we've been using for our transactional email delivery a company called Postmark for quite a while, and they're fantastic. So, um, you know, we're always going to be looking for the best partners, technology partners. And um, so can't say for sure that this would always be the case, but as of now, this is what we're offering. Of course, if we do make a change, we will do everything we can. And usually with almost usually it's seamless uh, to get you moved over to the new solution without any knowledge or input from you and only knowledge where it somehow would affect you. But our goal is always to just make it easy for you, put you into a better solution, a better place, and um, just allow you to do, do, do what you're good at, which is your business, right? Uh, Sean says, reseller account sounds amazing. I did not know about this. We'll be very interested in adding this for sure. Sweet Dash is a truly powerful system. Yes, Sean. Yes. I like it. Thank you. Sean said it best. I won't say it. Um, it is truly powerful, and, and, and it, it will get better. It's not perfect. It will always get better, but I think anyone who's been around um, for, long, for very long sees that we are cranking out features, both big and small. The big ones sometimes take a little longer. The small ones can be as small as mentioned in the webinar this week, deployed to production next week, or mentioned in the community this week, which I, I have in mind. I know there is a feature that's going out this week that was absolutely requested from the community and will be on live this week. So yeah, there's we're just constantly trying to solve your problems, listen to your feedback, and make the best decisions on how to use the resources that we have available to us to move forward in the best way. So thank you for the feedback. That's awesome to hear. And uh, we really appreciate it and value it. Okay. Any other last minute question that we can spend a couple minutes on? I'm willing to, willing to take it. But otherwise, three, two, one. I think that's going to be it for the day. Thank you, everyone, for your attendance, for your time, for your suggestions, for your feedback. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Hilton. Thank you, Carolyn. Very nice to see you all. And yes, thanks to Noel. Good job. Thank you, Noel. Well done. All right, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you and goodbye. Thanks.